we're going to deliver our live PE lesson. There's only a couple of things that you will need for the lesson. First thing you'll need is a piece of paper. You can get this from the scrap paper drawer because we always try and recycle when we get the chance. And with the piece of paper, you can either scrunch it up loosely into a big ball, which is much easier to catch. Or if you want a bigger challenge, you're gonna scrunch it up into a much smaller ball. If it's smaller, it's a little bit harder to catch. For those of you that are watching at home, you have a third option, and the option is this. You can get yourself a sock, keep rolling it and rolling it and rolling it, until eventually you have a sock ball. These are a little bit easier to use than the paper balls. They're a little bit softer, they're a little bit bigger, and they're a little bit easier to catch. If you're mega prepared, you might have a drink of water with you as well. We're going to give you 30 seconds to organise that nice and safely, and then we'll make a start on our activities. For those of you that are already organised, just spend a couple of minutes just looking at each of the activities that we've got. I'll just turn my camera slightly just to make sure that we've got it all in. There we go. <clears throat> For those of you that have just joined, this is the live PE lesson. It's delivered for key stage two, and we're looking at different coordination skills. All you need is a scrunched up piece of paper. And as we just said, try and get this from the scrap paper drawer so that we're recycling when we get the chance. I'm going to be doing each of these activities with a sock ball just because it's a better contrast from what we've got behind, so it'll be a little bit easier to see. So. We have 12 different things that we're gonna be looking at today. We've got the blue ones that are gonna start from the easiest, intermediate are the purple ones, and then we're gonna finish with the orange ones that are very, very tough. And with each activity, we'll differentiate as well, so we can make it easier or harder, depending on how much we want to scale up or ramp down the challenge. So the first one, we're gonna spend two minutes on the warm up, which is just throwing and catching your ball. So all you're going to do is take your ball, throw it up in front of you, hold your hands out and catch. Nice and easy. When we're doing this, there's a few things that you should bear in mind. Firstly, our eyes need to be watching the ball as they move up and down. Second thing we need to do is have our hands out, ready to catch. And the third thing we might need to do is if our throw goes a little bit further, we might need to move our body. So be on your toes or the balls of your feet so that you can quickly move dart left to right, forwards, backwards if you need to, catch a throw that's gone a little bit wonky. We said that we're going to differentiate, so if you're quite comfortable doing this and the challenge is a little bit too easy, Try doing it with one hand and then switch over so you're doing it with the other hand. We make sure we practice on each side of our body when we're doing physical activities because it helps us then to maximise our potential. And all we mean by potential is things that we're capable of doing. If you play cricket or rugby, It'd be really cool to be able to catch it with both hands. That would be awesome. Sometimes a pass might go to your right that you need to catch. Sometimes it might go across to your left. So to maximise our potential, maximise our ability, we want to be using both sides of the body when we can. And what a great time to practice on a Friday. Almost the weekend. And we can spend a bit of time practising backwards and forwards. If you're finding it difficult, just two hands up. And then when we catch, we use our hands almost like a book. They're going to close around the ball. So there, and as it lands, it closes to make sure that it doesn't bounce away. If your ball does bounce away, you don't have to worry about it in the slightest. All you're going to do is safely bend down and pick it up. And then you can carry on again. There will be lots of failure. There will be lots of times when you drop the ball. And that's absolutely fine. So, warm up done. We can tick that one off. And the next activity we're going to do is the drop. So with the drop, you're going to use both hands. One hand 
you're going to use holding the ball up in front of you and the other hand you're going to hold underneath ready to catch. If it's too hard then you can bring them a little bit closer. If you want a much bigger challenge then with your catching hand instead of it being just held out you're going to bring it right back to your body either by your waist or your hip. So this time when you drop it you need to move your hand out in order to catch. This is going to make it much more difficult. Two minutes, off we go. As always, make sure you use both hands as well so we can swap round. We want to become really proficient at using both hands. And all we mean by proficiency is we're really good at doing something in particular. So in these scenarios, we're throwing and catching. We want to become proficient, very good, at throwing and catching with our left hand and our right hand. If you want an even bigger challenge still, really make the gap much bigger. For those of you that are struggling a little bit, just going to go it like this. And as always, if you drop the ball, again, it's completely fine. We're here to learn. And learning is made up of two different things, success and failing. Every time we fail, our brain learns what not to do and we get better for next time. Every time we succeed, our brain learns what we do need to do. So if you fail, that's actually quite a good thing. And if you succeed, well, do you know what? That's a good thing as well. The more we practice, the better we get. So even if you drop the ball and it goes wrong and your ball rolls under the desk a few times, that isn't something you have to worry about at all. It'll happen to me on maybe some of the later exercises. I will drop this ball several times. Good, because it helps me to learn. And that's what we're at school to do, we're to practice, to learn, to get better and become more proficient at something to get better. We're gonna spend just 10 more seconds on this. Try and use both hands. So we've gone from catching with two hands to catching with one hand. It's slightly more difficult. And as the session goes on, it'll get more and more difficult. Good stuff. We can take that one off. The next challenge we're going to do is the overhead. And here you're going to take your ball, you're going to find a nice safe space in the classroom. So you might have to tuck your chair under if you haven't already. And all you're going to do is throw the ball and then catch it above your head. So we're going up we're catching it above our head. If that's a little bit too difficult, you might catch it just level with your face. That's fine as well. But if you want the challenge, catch the ball so it's above your head when you do it. Two minutes, off we go. If you've played cricket before, dodgeball, netball, any games where you have to do lots of catching, you might be already quite experienced at this. In which case, can you try and do it with just one hand? Once you've done it a few times, we're going to swap and use the other hand. If you guys are anything like me, you'll find that actually one hand is much, much stronger than the other hand. For me, I'm right-handed. I brush my teeth with my right hand. I write with my right hand. I do everything with my right hand. So when I have to use my left, it feels a little bit weird I actually tend to drop it a few times, not quite as good. But the more we practice, the better we get. You might even for the ultimate challenge is to throw and then catch in your opposite hand. But you don't have to, it's entirely up to you. We're just trying to build up our skill set. Our eyes are on the ball, our hands are always ready to catch, and we might need to move our body in order to catch the ball as well. We're gonna spend just 10 more seconds on this one. If you're at home, be careful you're not throwing it into the light. And if you're at school, be careful you're not throwing it into the lights. We always make sure that when we're doing physical activity, especially in the classrooms, we want to make sure that we stay safe. And it's the teacher's job, but it's also your job as well. You guys that are in Key Stage 2, you know very well what's safe and what's not safe. 
and we'd all be very, very saddened if any of you got injured. So we always make sure that we stay safe. Good stuff. We can tick that one off. And the final one out of our big warm-up set is the one-handed catch. So here you're going to take the ball and all you're going to do is throw across to your other hand. If that's too easy, you might start increasing the gap between your two hands till eventually you've got the ball throwing right over the top. But if that's too hard, again, you can just bring it in oops, and just do small little catches. Again, you will drop the ball. It will go wrong sometimes. When you do, nothing to worry about. We just pick it up and we carry on. It's all to do with gaining experience. And we're going to talk about experience in a moment because I know a lot of you guys play computer games and we'll link it very carefully to some of those games that you might play. In the meantime... We're just going to practice throwing and catching. Eyes on the ball, hands out, ready to catch. And be alert because if it's a bad throw or catch, you might need to move your body. Again, we're working on coordination. And all coordination means is moving different parts to make something happen. So here we're coordinating different parts of our body. We're moving different parts in order to catch the ball. So when I'm throwing, I'm moving my eyes. I'm moving my head slightly. I'm moving my hands. My shoulders and my arms and my elbow might be moving as well. So I'm coordinating all these movements. I'm moving them all in order to achieve an outcome. And the outcome is catching the ball so that gravity doesn't take over and it hits the floor. Last 10 seconds. Throwing and catching. Good stuff, guys. Really well worked. We're just going to take a one minute break. So if you've got a drink with you, that's fantastic. It's important to stay hydrated. If you haven't got a drink with you, you've got a choice. You can either <sighs> chill out for a little bit or you might practice one of the throws that we've just done so that you can get in even more practice time. OK, one minute. Off you go. It is quite warm as well, so if you've started sweating, that's probably a good thing. Thirty seconds and we'll make a start on the next range of activities. We're going to level up and look at the purple ones. These are going to be a little bit more difficult and might challenge you even further. In the meantime, we were talking about experience, weren't we? There's a bit of a misconception that, that some people think you're more experienced or you're better at something because you're older. It's not true. The only reason we're better at something is because we practice it a little bit more. That's it. There'll be some of you guys that are absolutely fantastic at playing guitar. You'll be loads better than me because you've practiced more. There'll be some of you that are loads better at gymnastics because you've practiced more. We might even have some better footballers. That's because you've practiced more. Doing tricks on your scooter. You'll be better because you might have practiced more. It's nothing to do with me being older. I've been around longer. I'm 34, so I might have had more time to practice. But if I haven't practiced that thing, I'm not going to get any better at it. So we call that our practice age, and we'll talk about that more in a moment. In the meantime, we're going to work on using the palm of our hand. And the palm is just the front bit of your hand. And you're going to use this bit here to hit the ball up and then catch. Again, if you're feeling pretty confident, you might start doing multiple catches, multiple hits on each hand. Two minutes, let's practice and get better. Go. Oops, what's that? There's an earthquake there. <laughs> So we call it our practice age, the time that we've been practicing something. Some of you that play football, your practice age 
might be a couple of years because you might have been playing football for a few seasons for a club now. Same with rugby, hockey, basketball, lacrosse. Some of you might have been playing games like lacrosse for maybe six or seven years. For some of you, you might be just starting. In which case, you're probably going to make a few more mistakes because our practice age is a little bit younger. And that's why some of you will be far better at playing the flute than me. My practice age of playing the flute is about five minutes. I had a go at it once when I was at primary school. But I only did it for about five minutes. So even though I'm 34, there'll be some of you that are absolutely miles better than me and the music you can make would sound beautiful. Mine would sound awful just because I haven't built up my practice age. So part of what we're doing here, we're gaining more experience because we're building up our practice age. We've spent more time practicing. And you'll notice that's the same in games as well. We're just going to do this for 30 more seconds. In games, you'll notice that when you've got your character, as you go and play the game, your character will tend to get stronger and stronger. You might unlock new abilities. Your character might be bigger. You might be stronger. You might have more hit points. You might have more armor. You might have more skills or magic that you can undo. And that's partly because when you play the game, your character's getting stronger and stronger because you're learning more and more. Well, it's the same in real life. Only instead of casting magic spells, we get better at spelling. We get better at helping other people. We get better at writing short stories. We get better at our times table. We get better at sports because we've been practicing more and more. So even though characters in games become experienced, we can do as well. As children, as adults, we can all carry on gaining more experience and making ourselves into our own version of a superhero. And hold it there. Good stuff, guys. That's quite difficult. Really well done. If you thought that was difficult, this one's going to be even tougher. We've used the palm. Some of you might have already guessed. We're now going to have a go at using the back of your hand. So the back of your hand, you're going to place the ball on it. And you've got a choice. You can either throw and catch or see how many times you can use the back of your hands to keep the ball up. There's going to be loads of failure. Don't worry about it. If the ball hits the floor, we pick it up and we go again. Two minutes. Let's go. I'm going to try it with a piece of paper now. If you are at home using pieces of paper, it is a lot more difficult. The piece of paper is smaller, which makes it a little bit harder. That's why I've got lots of spares lined up, because at the moment my floor is covered in little bits of failure where I've dropped the ball. But again, that doesn't particularly bother me, because each time I fail, each time I fail, my brain learns something new. For those of you that are quite good at this game, keep practicing. For those of you that might be struggling a little bit, now is a great time to try and magpie other people's ideas. So if you can see someone in the class that's doing really well, just spend 10 seconds or so watching them. What are they doing with their eyes? What are they doing with their hands, their shoulders, their legs, their body? And you might be able to magpie, borrow a few ideas and use that as your own. That's what's great about humans, we can kind of watch each other and we can copy ideas that, that work and make sense and then we can make that our idea our own. We don't copy things exactly, but we have a look at what we like and we take a few of those ideas and then we make it our own. And what we mean by making it our own is you add things that you like, things that you're good at. So for example, I'm reading the Harry Potter books at the moment. I've just finished Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. That's the one with Sirius Black. It's very, very good. So I've just finished reading that. And that kind of inspired me. So if I was to write a book, I might write it about witches and wizards because I think that's pretty cool. But I wouldn't copy Harry Potter exactly. I take bits of it that I liked and then add in my own ideas to make it my own story. That was just the inspiration. 
Right, it's the same when we're doing these skills. You're not copying them exactly, but you might take out a few things that you've noticed that's working well and try them out and see if they work for you as well. Backhand done, we can tick that one off. Next one we're gonna do is the turn. So here's what I'd like you to do. Everybody face that side of the classroom and all you're gonna do with your ball is throw it so it goes up and over your head a little bit like a rainbow flick and then you're gonna turn and hold out your hands ready to catch. Even better if you can use your eyes to track the ball as it goes over. And all we mean by tracking is when something moves and we watch as it moves, that's tracking. So, ball over the head and a catch. Two minutes, off we go. Try to make sure that you're turning to your left and then your right. If you turn the same way over and over again, you'll notice that you start to get dizzy. And there's a very good reason for that. So in your ear, we have some fluid that moves around. So as we turn faster and faster and faster, that fluid in our ear moves faster and faster and faster. And that's what makes us feel dizzy. But if we turn one way and then the other way, it stops the fluid spinning around as much, which stops us from getting dizzy, which is good. Think about it, if you've got a bowl of water or a bucket of water, or you might do it in the bath sometimes, if you swill the water round and round, it'll keep going. Whereas if you move your hand one way and then the other way, the water doesn't really start spinning. Well, that's exactly what happens in our ears. So if we go one way and then the other, we might feel a small bit dizzy, but if you've been on a roundabout or a merry-go-round or a fairground ride going round and round and round, you feel kind of really dizzy when you come off that. So there's things that we can do to help counteract that. I'm going to spend 30 more seconds on it. Again, if it's a little bit too difficult, all you're going to do is take the ball, throw it, and we're going to do what's called a quarter turn. So you're going to turn from the front to the side and then the side to the front. So front to the side, side, back to the front. And again, we're gonna turn each time a different way, left and right, to make sure that we don't get dizzy. Last 10 seconds on this one before we move on to our final purple challenge. And it is a very, very difficult one. And time's up. We can take that one off, we're flying through it now. We've done more than half the activities already, really well done. The final one for the purples, we're gonna try and catch the ball behind our back. So in the previous exercise, we threw the ball up and then turned. This time we're not gonna turn. We're gonna throw it up, we're gonna track it until it goes out of our sight and then move our hands behind us to try and catch the ball. I have failed loads at this. This could be another failure right now. Oh, get in. So that's what I'd like you to try and do. I'll move a little bit further here so you can see. Nearly. We're gonna spend two minutes trying to do that one. It's incredibly difficult. If you score a big fat zero, that's fine. If you score one, that's fine. If you score two, that's fine. It's all good. We're here to practice it and to get better. Off we go. We'll do this one and then we'll have a quick break. Sometimes it might hit you on the head. Sometimes it might hit your back. Sometimes it might hit your fingers and just roll out. Keep practicing. With activities like this as well, it might actually be a little bit easier if you were to kneel on the floor. Because if you kneel on the floor, the ball isn't gonna bounce as much and go as far away. And it's easier for you to get down to pick it up as well. Because you're already much lower. If you're a teacher or a parent trying this, let me know if you manage to succeed. It is very, very difficult. But all the time, we're building up our uh, coordination skills. I had to think then. <laughs> we're building our coordination skills. We're using different parts of the body. Combining them together to try and achieve an outcome. And you might be thinking, I'm never going to use this, not in a sport or an activity. Am I ever going to catch the ball behind my back? And you know what? You're right. You probably never will do. However, 
A lot of these skills that we're doing at the moment is what we call a transferable skill. Getting better at one thing then allows us to get better at something else. So for example, if you do knitting and you've never done sewing or cross stitching before, there's a chance that you're actually gonna be quite good at it because you've practiced very similar skills. That's why you tend to get, if people are very good at cricket, they also tend to be very good at things like dodgeball. Even though it's a totally different sport, if you've worked on certain throwing skills, that's gonna be helpful when it comes to dodgeball. So here we can use certain things like watching where the ball goes and judging its flight. That's important for pretty much every invasion sport. Little things like having to move to get our body in position. That's important for catching the ball. Having to use our fingers and our hands and move them around and coordinate. Very, very important in a range of different sports and physical activities. So although you may not just catch the ball behind your back, it's still a helpful skill to learn because of the things that we can learn from it. Last five seconds, see if anyone can do it. Four, three, two, one. And time's up, well done guys, really well worked. Again, that was incredibly difficult. If you score zero, that is absolutely fine because every time you fail, your brain learns a little bit more. So we can tick that off as a success. We've done four more, so quickly go and get yourself a drink. If you've already had a drink and you're ready to go, just spend 30 more seconds trying to do the back catch because it is difficult. I'm flying through this as well. We're already two thirds of the way through. 66.6%. Four more left to go on this Friday. I know a lot of you are watching at school. Some of you might be watching from home because the weather at the moment is incredibly snowy outside. Well, it is in Leeds anyway, that's where I live, and it's very snowy. I made a snowman the other day called Eric, and he's about six foot four, he's absolutely massive. It took us an hour to do. <laughs> Hopefully you guys aren't snowed in. But you've maybe got enough time for a snowball fight this weekend. That would be pretty cool. Right then, we're going to work on combo. And the combo is going to be palm and backhand. So uh, instead of just hitting and catching, you're going to try and use both sides of the hand. Even better if you can use both hands. It's very difficult. There will be lots of failure. The ball will fall to the floor lots of times. But as we've said, that's actually a good thing because our brain learns every time. Two minutes, go. Make sure you try and use both hands as well. We want to become very competent at using both hands. We're on the final ones now, we're on the orange challenges, so there will be a lot of failure. Things will go wrong. The ball will roll under the desk. The ball will hit you in the face. There will be times when you only get two or three points. There will be times where it's too difficult. That's okay. We keep practicing and we keep getting better. At the end, we're gonna have a big competition as well. And with the competition, you can play against other people or you can play it against yourself. It's entirely up to you. Gonna try out one of these again if you're at home and you've used the paper ones you've given yourself a very big challenge indeed it's much harder with the pieces of paper last 30 seconds on this one and then we're going to move on to a very difficult type of catch as well. Again, if there's people in your class that are very good at this game, there's a few things to consider. Firstly, 
they might have a higher practice age than you. They might be older, they might be the same age, they might be younger, but they might have been practicing similar skills a little bit more. They might be able to transfer skills from softball, handball, volleyball, anything like that. They might be able to use that to, to use on these games. And if someone is better than you, again, go and magpie their ideas. Find out what works for them and try and copy those ideas. Last 10 seconds. Have a look, see if there's anyone in your classroom that's actually got a rally going together where they've got maybe five or ten in a row. There might be somebody that you can see that actually is in the middle of a rally right now. And time up, really well worked. We can tick off. Combo, good stuff. We're now going to look at the catch, but instead of catching with the, uh, with the palm of our hand, which is what we usually use, we're going to try and catch the ball on the back of our hand. So this is gonna be very difficult. Two minutes, off you go. Again, all this time, every time we practice, if it's a pass or a fail, it doesn't really matter, we're gaining XP. And as you gain more and more XP, experience, we do become better. It just doesn't feel like it sometimes at the time. Sometimes it feels like we're trying and trying and trying and we're just not getting any better. But that's not true, your brain is still learning. Sometimes it just takes a while for it to actually happen. And that's where we have traits such as resilience, perseverance, determination. And I know at your school that's really important that you have those kind of values. The ability to carry on, whoops, the ability to carry on even when things aren't going particularly well. That's what heroes do. When things aren't going particularly well, they keep going, they keep battling, they keep trying, and eventually they get success. There's a phrase that you might have heard of, practice makes perfect, and it's very true. The problem is it doesn't make perfect instantly. It does take a lot of time to practice. Another phrase that I've heard is called practice makes permanent. And I like that one because if, if you're doing practicing something but you're not really trying, well then that trait becomes permanent, that laziness, and that's not what we want. Whereas if you practice something and you really think about it, and you really focus and concentrate and you care about what you're doing, then that starts to become a trait as well. That starts to become permanent. And you'll find out that you try hard and become successful at other things as well, not just the throwing and catching. How you do anything is how you do everything. It took me ages to understand that. But if you do some things well, make sure that you do everything well. Because when you do, it makes you a better person, it makes you more competent, and it turns you into your own version of a superhero. We've done catch. Next one we're going to do is cross. And for cross, you need two separate pieces of paper. If you haven't got a scrunched up second ball, go and get one now. And all you're going to do is hold a ball in each hand, and like the title suggests, cross your hands. You're then going to drop both balls, and while they're falling to the floor, you're going to uncross your hands and try and catch both of them before they hit the floor. Two minutes. Go. Very difficult. If the ball's falling to the floor a little bit too quickly, make sure that you use other parts of your body as well. We spoke about bending your knees which would drop your body, and if you drop as the balls drop, it makes it a little bit easier to catch. Nope, dropped them both. <clears throat> Gonna go one of each. Just... Well done guys, we're absolutely flying through this. We are at the penultimate challenge. And penultimate just means second to last. Ultimate is kind of the final. Penultimate 
is the second to the final one, second to last. So for some of you, this might be the penultimate lesson of the day, second to last. This is the penultimate activity, second to last. So when you're next to a piece of writing, you might be able to fit in the word penultimate if you're listing things. It was the penultimate game of the tournament. Last 30 seconds on this one. If you're finding it too hard, lift your hands higher up. If the hands are higher, you've got more time to catch as they fall to the floor. If you want the game to be harder, even harder than it already is, because we might have some superstars, cross your hands much further and then try and catch. That is incredibly difficult. We're gonna go for 10 more seconds, off you go. Keep working hard, that's what we do. We work hard, we might be sweating a little bit. That's a good thing as well. And time's up, well worked. And we move on to our ultimate, our final activity, which is TTCC. I abbreviated it just because there wasn't enough room to write the whole thing down. And that stands for throw, throw, catch, catch. So all you're going to do is throw the ball up one at a time and then catch. It looks a little bit like juggling with two balls. So as we throw and one ball is traveling in midair, as it starts to drop, we then chuck the other ball up so that that throws as well. And then we catch one and then catch the other as it lands. Throw, throw, catch, catch. Very difficult. Two minutes, off we go. If you fail and drop the ball, fine. If you succeed, fine. We're here just to practice and get better. There might be somebody in your class that can actually juggle, in which case they can use those transferable skills into this activity as well. And if you can't juggle, this is the start. And if this is too difficult for you, which I know it might be, there's a little secret that'll make it easier. Just do one throw. So you're going to do one, and as it travels through the air, you're going to swap the other ball. Just like that. And that's the start of it. So we've got one hand that's doing the throwing, and the other hand that's doing the catching and the passing over. So again, we're combining different parts of our body doing different things. Coordination. Very, very difficult, but if you play cricket, any sports where you have to use your hands to catch, this will be absolutely perfect. If you have a dog and you like throwing the ball for your dog, again, this is perfect because we're getting better at using our fingers and using our hands. Hopefully some of us again will be quite sweaty and we'll talk about sweat and dehydration and hydration in a moment because that's very important as well. Last 10 seconds, see if you can fit in one more throw, throw, catch, catch. And time is up. We've done our final four activities. In a moment, we're going to have a full class competition. But before then, take one minute just to relax. Grab yourself a drink if you haven't already. But if you're ready to go and you've still got bags of energy, then try one of these activities again. One minute. Off you go. I'm going to get a drink because I'm exhausted. You might also use this time as well to go around and collect any scrunched up pieces of paper that have maybe rolled away. I'm going to start the competition in about 30 seconds. Ten seconds left, get yourself ready, make sure that you have two balls, you will need two. You can put one of them down on the desk, because you're going to be using it very, very soon. So, this is the way our competition works. We're going to do each activity, but only for one minute, and the aim of the game is to try and get as big a score as possible. Remember, this is your own personal score. If you want to share it, you can do. If you don't want to share it, you don't have to. Keep it secret if you choose to. So, this is how it works. 
if you manage to do three catches and then drop the ball, your score is three because you've done three catches in a row. When you pick up the ball, your score is still three, but you're gonna start your new rally again from zero. So one, two. I only got one, so my score stays three because that's still the highest I've achieved. If I then get the ball and do, let's say, five catches, my new score is now five because I've done five in a row. We're not adding three and five together. It's just however many you've got in a row within one minute. So that said, we're gonna make a start. Three, two, one, go. If you remember, these were the warm-up activities. And now, because we've actually done a lot of catching, some of you will have caught the ball over a hundred times today. So this now should feel a little bit easier because we've got more experience and we've upskilled ourselves. We've become more competent, more proficient. We've become better at this activity because we've been practicing lots. We need to make sure we remember the basics as well. Eyes on the ball, hands snap shut like a book to make sure that it doesn't hit the floor. And we might need to move our body as well if we need to make a quick movement in order to catch. Last 10 seconds, remember it's however many you get in a row that is your score. Five, four, three, two, one. Time's up, really well done. If you want to write down your score, you can do. If you don't, then you don't have to. Next one we're gonna do is the drop and we're gonna fly through these exercises, by the way. I know it's Friday, but we'll make sure that we finish at about 25 past so that we've got time for a changeover. So, the drop, all you're gonna do is hold the ball out in front of you and again, hand down to drop. See how many you can do, one minute, off you go. We're gonna focus here on quality. The problem is if let's say you get to 10 and you start rushing, there's more chance of you dropping the ball. And if we drop the ball, you need to start your score again from zero. Whereas actually if we take our time, slow and steady wins the race. You'll all be familiar with the tortoise and the hare. The hare started getting a bit of a head start and then made some pretty rubbish decisions. But the person that was just going very slow, very steady, making sure that each bit was right, ended up winning. You might notice it a little bit when you play Jenga. If only if you played that game where you've got to build up and you've got to take out the little pieces. If you take out the pieces really quickly, what happens? Well, sometimes you get away with it. Sometimes you can pull it out quickly. Other times the whole thing comes crashing down and you've got to start again. So it's better to do it slowly, do it right. And once you get better, then you can speed up. But we need to make sure that we get it right first. And time's up. Well done, guys. We can tick another one off. Next up is the overhead catch. So I'm just going to lower myself. And all you're going to do is throw and try and catch above your head. 60 seconds, let's go. Throwing and catching above the head. We spoke earlier, there might be some people that are getting a little bit sweaty, and that's a good thing. So when we sweat, it cools our body down. Unfortunately, we are not radiators. If we get really warm, we can't just press a button that then lowers our body temperature. Instead, the body has a very clever way of doing it, and it's called sweating. So all the warm water in your body starts to come out through little gaps in your skin, pores, that's what they're called. And when it comes out of your pores as sweat, it helps to cool your body down. But there's a problem. If all that water's leaving our body, we need to make sure that we replace it. And when we do that, we drink water and we call that hydration. We hydrate, we drink water and that's good for our skin. It's good for our brain, it helps us to concentrate. It's good for our body, it's good for when we move, and it helps us to stay nice and healthy. It helps us to sleep, it helps to control your body temperature, it makes your skin look nice. Sweating is a very good thing. But if we don't drink enough, then we become dehydrated. And when we become dehydrated, it means that you haven't got enough water in your body. 
And if you notice that, you might become a little bit tired. Sometimes if you haven't drunk enough water or juice in the day, you might notice that you get a bit of a headache. You might notice your mouth become a little bit dry. So whenever we sweat, we need to make sure that we drink water to replace the water that's come out. And we call that hydration, drinking water. And time's up. Well worked, guys. We can take that one off. And final one is the one hand. So we're going to catch just with one hand. 60 seconds. Let's go. We're flying through this. Just one hand again. If you want the challenge to be bigger, you can move the ball out further from side to side. So it's actually traveling much further. Again, you're going to use your eyes to track the ball. And if there's someone in your class that's very good at doing this, go and watch them. See if you can steal any top tips off them. When I say steal, I don't really mean steal. I mean borrow. I mean magpie. I mean take those ideas and make it your own. Because we never copy things exactly. Their body might be different to yours. They might be slightly taller. They might be shorter. They might have longer or shorter arms. They might have bigger or smaller hands, so we can't copy them exactly. But we can try and steal or borrow or magpie a few ideas that they're using and then experiment with them to find out if it works for us. And time's up. Next one, we're going to use the palm of our hand. So the exercise is becoming more difficult now. We're onto the purple level. With your hand, you're going to hit the ball repeatedly so it stays in the air. 60 seconds, go. If you get the chance, use both hands as well. It's a little bit like playing a mini tennis match against yourself. If you can do it for a full minute, great. If you can do it for four seconds, great. If you can only do it for one second, great. It's all about improving and getting better. When you succeed, you learn, and when you fail, you learn. It's all part of gaining XP, experience. And with these skills, we can transfer them onto other skills. There's 101 billion different activities that you can do with your hands. The more we practice, the better we get. If you're a teacher or a parent doing this, by the way, you might have a competition against the children. If you manage to kind of get on top of all your marking. Or you might be playing the role of the referee. Making sure that everyone's doing it with quality, with enough care because that's what helps us to get better. <laughs> it's Friday afternoon. Hopefully some of the snow will stay this weekend. I know some people are going to go sledging. That'll be fun. Time's up. I know some people are going to build a snowman. That'll be cool as well. This time we're going to go back of the hand. Ready? Three, two, one, go. In fact, speaking about transferable skills and, and using your hands to throw and catch, some people might even be having a snow fight at the weekend. So some of the skills that we're learning now might transfer into a snowball fight as well. 30 seconds left. Again, if you're using a piece of paper, it's a lot more difficult. If you want to keep your score, you can do. If you want to compare it with somebody else, you can do. But you can also keep it quiet if you choose to. Again, some of these activities are very, very difficult indeed. And time's up. Good, because I was having a nightmare on that one. <laughs> the next one is turning. So we're going to turn as we catch. Tracking the ball, keeping our eyes on it, scanning its movement, and then moving our hands and our body, coordinating accordingly. Let's go. Some of you might be getting a little bit tired now. I'm not surprised. This is very difficult. We call this physical education. 
physical, using your body, and education. Well, education is learning, isn't it? So we're learning about the body. Not just kind of what muscles do, not just what your heart does and what your skeleton does, but also learning how to move your body. So here we're learning and then practicing skills that'll help us to get better at catching. So here's a bit of a misconception. PE isn't just about physical education. It's about using your mind as well, using your brain to think about things. So when we talk about the physical side, that's what's going on in your head as well. Using our eyes to work out how far the ball is traveling, how quickly, thinking about where you need to position your hands. So although it's just physical stuff, there's still a lot going on in the brain as well. And stuff that we think about, we call that psychological. When we're thinking about things, when we're calculating something, when we're working something out. And time's up. And my personal favorite, which I think is one of the toughest, trying to catch the ball. Oh, behind your back. 60 seconds. Oh, go. I'd be amazed if anyone can catch it behind the back. I know it's incredibly difficult. If you make one catch, that's brilliant. If you make no catches, that's brilliant as well. As long as we keep trying, we keep learning. It's part of being resilient, persevering. We keep trying things in the face of adversity. And I know I've said these things a few times now, but that's because it's really, really important. You guys are in charge of your own actions. In theory, you guys get to choose how good you become at something. And the only thing you've got to do to be good at it is be willing to put the time into practice. Ages ago, we used to believe that you were born with certain skills that you can then use. <clears throat> and only a small, small amount of that is true. We now learn, we now know that we learn through doing things. We practice things over and over again and that helps to become better. Last three seconds, two, one, and time's up. Very tough that one. And we're moving on to now our final four exercises, starting with the combination. So we're using front of the hand, back of the hand. 60 seconds, off we go. I'll keep my promise to you teachers and parents at home. We will finish in the next couple of minutes so that you've got time for that transition to the other class. Break time. Or just for the children to go to the toilet and get a glass of water. Because they will be very, very tired, no doubt. So we have something called neuroplasticity. Which is a mega big word. So neuroplasticity is the fact that when you try something, the structure of your brain changes very, very slightly. So if you practice throwing and catching a lot, your brain will change slightly so that it becomes better at throwing and catching. And it remembers how to do it. That's why you'll notice that you guys might be very good at certain things like football or playing the piano, or you might be able to do tricks on your scooter. If you give that scooter to someone that's never tried that trick before, they won't be able to do it straight away because they haven't practiced. Their brain hasn't changed enough to allow them to do it. And again, that's the psychological side of things, neuroplasticity, that the brain changes slightly when we do different activities. That's part of leveling up. That's part of gaining experience. We can literally change our brain. It doesn't change the size and the shape or anything like that. All it does is just change a few little things inside what we call connections. And then that allows us to do activities. You'll have noticed that if you've got a younger brother or sister, especially when they were very young, when they tried to feed themselves, food used to go absolutely everywhere. And that's because they haven't developed the skills to eat properly yet. They maybe haven't now. <laughs> Combo done. Right, next up is the catch. So we're gonna drop both and we're gonna try and catch at the same time. We're gonna spend just 30 seconds on this, go. So one in each hand, drop, catch. I caught neither, but that's a good thing. 
because my brain will have learnt a little bit from it. The more we practice, the better we get. It's a very big word that we're looking at, neural plasticity. Neural as in things that go on in your brain. We have neurons in our brain. And plasticity means that something can change. So we're changing the neurons. We're changing the way that our brain works. So it's becoming better. It's like an upgrade for your brain. It's like leveling up your head. It's fantastic. And it's all free. It just takes a little bit of practice. Tick that one off. And, oh, I've done this wrong. Cross was that one. Running out of time. So we'll move on to the third and final one. Throw, throw, catch, catch. I want to make sure that I keep my promise of finishing a few minutes early. So here we go. Two balls, throw, throw, catch, catch. Off we go, 30 seconds left. We're gonna absolutely fly through this. Again, the ball might touch the floor a lot of times. If it does, that's okay. 20 seconds left. Once you become comfortable, you might even start throwing with a different hand. So you might start with your left and then you might start with your right. You might notice that one side's slightly better than the other, and that's all down to experience. You might be more experienced in throwing and catching on one hand than you are the other. The last five seconds, four, three, two, one. Fantastic guys, really well done. You've all worked really hard, brilliant stuff. I will say this, it's nearly the weekend. This is, I think, the penultimate lesson. I think you've still got something to do after this. But I'd like to say thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. It's a pleasure working with you all. We'll have new activities on Monday. Um, and hopefully I'll see you guys all again on Friday. Have a great weekend. Stay active. Stay healthy. Stay safe. And I will see you all again soon. Enjoy the snow.